Hey everyone, I just wanted to give you a little bit of advice um, on approaching the Unit 1 essay because it's the first time you've uh, written an essay for me and philosophy essays are a different beast and this class is even a little bit different than probably even what you might be used to for other philosophy classes. So um, the first thing I want to start with though is a very specific note about Unit 1, which is um, don't consult uh, your friends, Professor Google or Teaching Assistant YouTube on this one. Um, everything else in the class, you'll be fine if you do that, but this particular essay assignment, that's going to lead you astray. Um, it's okay if when you're trying to understand for the prisoner's dilemma, um, that's fine. Go ahead. There's plenty of good stuff out there explaining the prisoner's dilemma. Um, if that helps you better understand the tragedy of the commons, great, do that. But the tragedy of the commons is a different beast. Um, don't go looking for information on that online because the way we're talking about it is really different from everything else you'll find. Um, the way we're talking about it is sort of a watered down version of a very sophisticated thing in economics and decision theory, game theory. Um, you're going to get into trouble if you listen to the stuff on YouTube because it's basically talking about a something that's different. Um, the thing that I'm, I've said a little bit elsewhere about what's different, so I won't get into it here, I guess. Um, all right, so a couple of general suggestions now for any of the essays you write, um, and then we'll get into the specific stuff. Um, so whenever I'm grading an essay, uh, I'm always trying to think, if somebody who hadn't taken the class was to look at this, would they be able to understand what's going on and, you know, really get the hang of it? Now, of course, thousand words isn't that much. I'll pause while you gasp. Um, but, you know, my explanation of the written lecture is way more than a thousand words, and I barely scratched the surface. Um, so, obviously, you're not going to be able to explain every detail and every bit of nuance and all that. Um, but you still want to have that idea, like, am I conveying it in a way that's basically, you know, teaching this stuff to somebody who didn't know anything about it, okay? Um, I don't want you to worry about really um, an introduction or de definitely don't worry about a conclusion. And, you know, don't worry too much about style transitions and all of that stuff. I mean, you know, they're nice, but you don't want to spend too much time on that. Introductions and philosophy essays should be really short. I mean, the stuff I publish, my introductions are, you are like, like three sentences long. It's kind of like, here's a problem. Here's what I'm going to say. Here's how, let's go do it, you know? So you want to just get into the meat of it really quick. And I'd actually suggest holding off until the very end to write your introduction. I know that's probably not going to be possible, but I'll tell you one trap that I fall into a lot, and I'm sure others of you will, is I will spend way too much time writing the introduction before I jump into writing the rest of it. <laughs> and then I'll write the rest of it and decide that, oh, the things I said in the introduction, that's kind of not actually what I ended up saying, so I have to scrap it anyways. So I don't know if you guys do that, but don't spend a lot of time on the introduction. Spend a lot of time on the meat of it. Um, I know you guys have been indoctrinated with the evil five paragraph essay uh, format. It's evil, I think. Uh, so if you have to write an intro and a conclusion, go ahead. But don't think that you only need three paragraphs beyond that, okay? All right. Other thing, and this helps, you know, with, with the first bit, is... Uh, since my standard is like, would somebody else understand this if they read it? It's a good idea to like try to rope somebody in and try to and get them to read it and see if they understand it. Um, you don't want to get somebody who's going to be like too interested, you know, who's going to be like want to talk about it and then you've wasted all your writing time, uh, you know, discussing. But you know, somebody they'll be like, oh, okay, yeah, I kind of get it. But what about this? Or I didn't understand that part. I mean, that will be really helpful. So if you can get somebody to do that, uh, that will help. Either way, it's always helpful to read things out loud before you turn them in. Um, there's just something, and I believe there's like some neurological reasons for this, but just from the inside, it seems like a little bit more like somebody else is reading it. When you read it out loud, you catch stuff that you didn't catch if you just look at it on the screen. So at a bare minimum, try to read it out loud because you'll catch a lot of like, you'll definitely catch grammar problems, but you also catch things where you're like, wait, what was I saying there? Okay, and that's what I want you to do. Okay, so now for the big thing. Um, 
I write all of the essay prompts. I mean, so this is the complete opposite of the journal assignments, right? Where there's like no requirements. Here, there's something super duper specific I want you to do. So I want you to do exactly what the essay prompt asks you to do and don't do anything else, okay? You don't have time to do other stuff. So you wanna take each prompt and break it up into, a, into like a, a list of tasks. And I would suggest literally doing this, make a list um, at the top of your document that you're writing this in, you know, like, here's what I want what I need to do. Uh, because the last thing you should do before you turn it in is to make sure that when you read it over, you go through and you go, okay, did I do this? Check. Did I do this? Check. Did I do this? Check. Did I do this? Okay. Um, it's super easy to forget to do something like you had thought about it, you know, you knew what you were going to do. And then, you know, it just it doesn't get in there and it's just super easy to do that. So you want to catch that kind of problem so you don't, you know, miss out on points and, you know, you don't miss out on the opportunity to explain it. Okay. Um, I'm going to give you a copy of the rubric that, you know, we'll use in the peer review and that I'll be using in, in grading. Um, I'll, I'll give you a copy of that. Uh, it's, it should be linked in the instructions for the, for the assignment. So take a look at that. That will also help you figure out exactly what you need to make sure you're doing. Now, I try to write all the essay prompts, um, you know, like a list, and I try to do it so there's like one thing in each sentence. Sometimes I can't do that because the grammar gets too weird, but, you know, I try to do that. So let's look real quick at um, the our first uh, essay assignment. So, okay. So what's the first thing you need to do? Well, you need to explain the structure of the tragedy of the commons, right? Uh, Next thing you need to do is make sure you explain why it rash remains rational to cheat even when one knows that enough people cheating will result in catastrophe. Okay, then you need to explain two measures by which the the uh, people in the fishing village can example can escape. All right, so that's four things that you need to do. You want to make sure that you in some way go through and be able to check off each one of those before you turn the thing in. Okay, so let's talk really quick about um, what I want you to do for each. Um, I'll try not to say too much that's redundant because I said it in other places uh, in the written and the video lectures. So uh, number one or number zero, because like a mathematician, we should start counting from zero. Um, you don't want off by one errors. Computer science majors, you're welcome for that. Um, uh, Nah, I won't tell the joke. Anyways, remember, Adam, cut that out in editing. Everyone else laugh when I forget to cut that out. All right. So strategy, strategy, explain the structure of tragedy of the commons. What do I mean by the structure? Well, remember that the thing about these situations is that you get trapped by the way the costs and the benefits line up. Right. So if you're, you know, you're trying to decide what should I do. So um, obviously, since, by the way, side note, I don't think I'm going to say this later. Um, since you want to be talking about the overfishing example at the end, you might as well use that as your main example throughout. Okay. So you're going to want to talk about the fishing village. It makes it easier on you. Um, don't fall in the trap to thinking that the person reading though understands what that situation is. You want to make sure you explain what that situation is, but you also don't want to make sure you make sure you go, you know, you spend half of the essay just trying to explain that. All right just kind of sketch it out. Assume, you know, I shouldn't go too far in that, but um, you want to explain how the costs and benefits line up. So, and in that kind of situation, remember, or all the tragedies of the commons, remember you have this kind of matrix, right? Where you have um, the, the sort of possible futures up here. You could do it either way, but this is the way I do it. Um, and then you have the individual person's choices over here, right? And so then this was like, um, I think I did in this order. It uh, doesn't matter the order. It just matters that you, you know, be talking about the right things. Uh, so those, and then you have the, like the cheat, you know, catch the extra fish, you know, and then the don't cheat. Um, if you are perfectly welcome to make a table like this in your, um, in what you turn in, but don't let that stand in for the explanation. What we care about is the explanation. Uh, it's it's really easy to just like put that in there and assume somebody knows what they're looking at. And that is not going to be the case. So make sure you explain what goes in there. But the structure is the tr is the way that the costs and benefits line up so that no matter which future you're looking at, it's always going to be rational to cheat, right? 
that's the thing that traps us. Okay. So the second thing I ask you to do is to explain, make sure that you've explained why it remains rational to cheat, even when you know that enough people cheating is going to cause the catastrophe. Well, you're probably going to just do this while you're explaining the structure of the tragedy of the commons. But the reason why I'm putting this in as a explicit kind of task in your essay. So you don't have, if you already did it, you know, while you're talking about, uh, don't waste words, don't do it again, you know, but, um, the reason I put this in here is, you know, it's sort of a trap, right? Because if you didn't listen to my early, my, the advice I started with and you asked uh, professor Google or teaching assistant YouTube, this is going to be real. You're probably going to not be able to do that, or it's probably going to be very unclear why that would be true. Because And that's the real big difference between the version you'd get when we're talking about it in other contexts and the versions you'd get when you're talking about it here. The version here is a lot scarier because in other situations, you can do things like educate people or, you know, help people understand about how to reason about the situation or, you know, things like that. But in our kind of situations, our kinds of tragedy of the commons, education or advertising, things like that, that might make it worse. Right. Because, you know, it might be some people, oops, some people didn't understand what the costs and benefits were and how the structure worked. And then you go around and you're like, look, if everybody keeps cheating, this is what's going to happen. And then people are going to be like, oh, crap, I didn't realize I, that I should cheat. Right. So that advertising, education, stuff like that might help in the other kind of tragic comments, not going to help with ours. And so I'm putting this requirement in here. And I want you to make sure you can check this off so that you did not fall into that trap. Because that's the biggest way people go wrong in answering this and approaching this essay. Okay. Um, then once you've set all of, the, all of that out, I want you to talk through two different ways we, you could get out of it. Tons of different ways to do this, right? Um, so just, I've, I've talked about it elsewhere, uh, but, you know, the say the pile of fish strategy. And what I want you to do for each of these I want you to make sure that you explain, you know, sort of explain the strategy, you know, the, the measure, right? And then I want you to explicitly go back and, and explain how it changes the payoff structure. And if you find that you did not use the words change the payoff structure in your essay, you don't have to do that. But it's a really, really good idea, too, because that is the fundamental thing you got to do. If you find yourself in a tragedy of the commons, you know, again, it's my analogy is kind of like you don't want you, if you play that game, you're going to lose. You got to flip over the table. You got to start a different game. Right. So you got to change the payoff structure. You got to change how the costs and benefits line up. So what I want you to do, you know, is explain the measure, the explain the the strategy you're talking about, and then explain how it works, right? So um, you got the pile of fish strategy, right? You know, so we all instead of individually selling our fish on the market, we all put our fish into a big, gross sounding pile, and then that pile gets sold off. Now there's no longer an individual benefit to um, catching the extra fish, right? So you go back here and you like, you know, but the cases where you cheat, this was always like you got that little benefit from having the extra fish. But if we're all, you know, just putting our fish into one big pile, well, now there's not that little bit, bit of a extra benefit. Okay. Um, if you're, for example, doing the, um, the various kind of like regulations or the social shame versions, you know, so like if we all, um, get into, you know, when we all pull into port at night, each of us hops over to the, you know, the boat next to ours and we all together count fish and if anybody counts over the limit you know we go to the person whose boat that was and we're like shame shame you don't get to come to the bar with us you have to stay home sad bad right um and so you you know you explain that and then you need to say you know sort of how that would work right so you back, go back and you say well you know there's this little cost of the there's still that little cost of the extra fish but now there's this you know sort of huge minus of, you know, feeling really crappy because everybody hates you, right? So the the social cost is a cost, right? It might not be dollar denominated, but costs are costs. They're not, we don't need it to be dollars. So you, you just explain that, you know, as long as people are not, if the fish is worth, I don't know, whatever, a hundred bucks, you know, but we catch somebody cheating, you know, and it's like, we're never going to invite them to our parties for a whole year. 
And you say, if you're an economist, you'd be like, well, what would you be willing to pay to avoid being excluded from parties? That's my economist voice, sorry. You know, and like, oh, I'd pay a thousand dollars for that. You go, okay, okay, so see, now you end up, there's no, you're still losing 900 bucks because of the shame that you'll incur when you're found out to be cheating, okay? So whichever strategy you use, I just want you to explain it. And then I want you to, <laughs> this is, becomes increasingly incoherent. This is why I don't use this for iPad thing very much, but um, okay. So you'll explain the strategy and then you'll explain how it changes the payoff structure and really make sure that you can check off both of those boxes. I mean, it doesn't take a lot of words to explain it, but it's really important um, that I know, you know that this works, right? Because I don't want, you, you might've just remembered, oh, we could put our pile of fi our fish into a big pile and sell it. And I'm like, yeah, that would work, but do you know why that works, right? You gotta show the reader that you know why that works, right? Okay, um, and then the last couple of things is, uh, again, you wanna make sure that you go over your checklist and you make sure you can check off everything. And I would suggest literally doing this because it is so easy, right? You know, you made that list at the beginning, you had a plan, you knew what you were gonna do and you did it and you forgot to do number three. And it's so easy because you meant to do it, you had thought about doing it, to think that it's there. And I swear, I, I have done this so many times, you know, you, I, I read over the thing that I wrote. I swear there's that paragraph, it's in there. And I read it and I don't see the paragraph. Um, it's just super, I mean, I'm kind of ADD, but you know, for everybody, it's really easy to miss stuff like that. So you want to make sure that you literally check off all of the things you needed to do before you turn it in. Um, I would suggest if you can, and I look, I'm a big believer that a deadline is the time that it needs to be turned in. I don't do things until I exactly the minute that I need to do them. Um, so I ain't going to criticize if you are going to be working right up to the deadline. But if you can, you know, give yourself a little bit of time between when you finish and when you turn it in. Um, if you can just, you know, you finish it the night before, you're going to turn it in first thing in the morning. Before you do that, read it over again. Um, having fresh eyes on it is really the best thing you can do. Again, it's super easy to think that you explain something in a really clear way because it's clear in your head and you're trying to take what's in your head and put it out onto the page. And it's so easy to just not see that it didn't quite get there. Um, so, but if you do take some time in between, um, you'll catch a lot more of those kind of errors. So if you can, give yourself some time before you reread it. But in any case, when you finish, before you turn it in, make sure that you reread it, reread re it, reread it, and make sure you've covered everything. And honestly, I would suggest, at, I'm sure people don't like doing it this way, um, and it is kind of weird, you know. Um, I would suggest writing the essay without the introduction and without connecting the paragraphs together. And only once you're done, go back and put that stuff in. Um, this is for two reasons, especially on the introduction. One is it, writing introductions is really fun and it's really easy. Um, and I, at least personally, can spend hours writing an introdu introduction that I should have spent actually working on the thing and thinking through what I meant to say. Um, and then, you know, you're eating up time. And more importantly, a lot of times you kind of change your mind as you're writing the essay. Um, and so you come back to the introduction and you have to just throw it out. Um, in fact, some of the best advice I got when I was an undergrad was, you know, you write your introduction, you go through, you finish up, you write a conclusion, then you cut the conclusion and you delete the introduction and put the conclusion there as the paragraph, as the introduction. Um, you don't need much by way of introduction, but if you're going to put it in there, do it at the end, but really try to focus on all of the stuff that's in the middle. Um, and I'm going to, I just one side note. Um, I actually over the summer wrote some software to kind of, that would force you to do this. It would kind of like walk you through a bunch of tasks, you know, and then like at the very end, spit out the, the sort of skeleton of an essay, you know, and be like, okay, slap an introduction on that, you know, connect this stuff together and turn that in. Um, I chickened out on actually using it until I tested it a little bit more, but you know, I'm 
we might see later in the semester. Maybe I'll make it an optional thing to, you know, try out, see if that helps you. Okay. Anyways, so real quick, three big things I want you to do or not do, whatever. It's totally fine to Google this one. Don't. Professor Google will mislead you about the tragedy of the commons. Number two um, is try to have somebody else look at it or to at least, you know, try to evaluate it against this kind of standard um, that whether or not somebody who hasn't ever seen this stuff before would be able to understand what's going on. And number three, um, break it up into a, a series of tasks and just make the tasks as small as you can. I mean, in this one, they don't kind of get smaller than I laid out, but in other situations they do. Um, actually, you could probably make it smaller. I mean, there's, well, I'll leave it to you to figure out how to do that. But anyways, if the, the more granular you can make your task list, the better your essay is going to be. So break it up into a, a series of tasks. And then at the end, go back and make sure that you did all of the things you needed to do. Okay. Um, good luck. I hope this helps. Enjoy.